vulnerable sectors of the population. The countries which make up the Caribbean community are small and low-lying coastal states with small populations, limited land space, and limited resources. They are at the mercy of natural disasters and shocks to the global economy. Some of them have been reclassified by international financial institutions as middle income, which makes them ineligible for the technical and financial assistance, which may be av available to poor and highly indebted poor countries. These make the task of providing health and other social service, services much more onerous. Data from the Ministry of Public Health in my own country, Guyana, indicate that 70% of deaths occur because of non-communicable diseases, with cardiovascular disease accounting for 32%, diabetes 16%, cancers 9.6%, chronic lung disease 2.3%, and injuries and violence 7%. Add to these aging, unplanned urbanization, and unhealthy lifestyles, and we have a lethal combination. Our governments cannot fight this battle alone. All sectors of society must be engaged. And this is why this healthy Caribbean coalition is playing its role. Based on deep concern over the social issues affecting our respective countries within CARICOM, a group of wives met in Belize last year and we launched CARICOM. We agreed to champion the Every Caribbean Woman, Every Caribbean Child Initiative, which was a Caribbean manifestation of the Every Woman, Every Girl Initiative of former UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. The CARICOM initiative focuses on reducing adolescent pregnancy, with the Caribbean having the dubious distinction of having the second highest rate of teenage pregnancy after Sub-Saharan Africa. And we have to be concerned also when teen pregnancy has increased by 33%, it is reported, vis-a-vis -vis the global rate. We also focus on mother-to-child transmission of HIV AIDS. And here again, we must be concerned about the increase in infection, particularly among our young population, and use any means available to protect them by making PrEP available to those who are prone to risky behavior and ensuring that they have access to viable medications. I know people go for the generic, but we have to ensure that we do not get substandard, non-classified drugs or so-called drugs um, in our haste to try to reach as much of the population with the resources we have. Um, we also look at cervical cancer which is also a leading cause of death, in second leading cause of cancer death in my country, and of course, domestic violence. The initiative received the support of the Clinton Foundation and the pilot project is soon to be rolled out in Jamaica. The objectives of the pilot are promotion of the health and well-being of the region's adolescents, expanding prevention and improving early diagnosis and treatment of cervical cancer, elimination of mother-to-child transmission of HIV and congenital syphilis, and advocacy for the reduction of gender-based violence, including the requisite legislative reform, the provision of psychosocial support to victims, and the inclusion of men and boys in the solution. This pilot will be the template for the rollout to other states with adjustments being made on national, based on national priorities. The spouses also agreed that they would each continue to focus their attention on issues of burning need in their respective communities. In this context, our, care, our chair, uh, the Honorable Case Kim Simplis Barrow, focuses on improving the condition of women and children in Belize in her capacity as Special Envoy for Women and Children including girls' education, persons with disabilities, and administration of the HPV vaccine to prevent cervical cancer. The Honorable Maria Brown, MP of Antigua and the Bahamas, uh, uh, sorry, Antigua and Barbuda, works on empowering women. The Honorable Patricia Minnis of the Bahamas works with teenage girls and towards the reduction of teenage pregnancy. 
Her Excellency Martin Moyes of Haiti focuses on, focuses on vaccination of babies and young children. And here in Jamaica, the Honorable Juliet Holness includes the pilot project in Jamaica among the issues which she champions. Mrs. Rima Carmona, the for former First Lady of Trinidad and Tobago, will share with you tomorrow her own experience in contributing to the NCC NCD response in her country. On my own part, I collaborate with the Ministries of Education, Public Communications, Public Health, Social Cohesion, Social Pro and Social Protection, as well as NGOs and interested organizations and individuals on programs relating to the education of women, girls, and young people in general. Thus, teen mothers are encouraged and supported in their efforts to continue their education, whether it be completion of their secondary education or pursuit of technical and vocational education. They are also invited to participate in workshops coordinated by my office, such as the child care and caring for the elderly workshops, upon completion of which they receive a certificate recognized by Guyana's Board of Industrial Training. They have also participated in self-reliance and success in business workshops, conducted mainly for women, but we have included some men who have asked to be included, making them honorary women for the purposes of those workshops, <laughs> which teaches them how to establish and successfully manage a business at the most basic level. Uh, this workshop, is also recognized by the Small Business Unit of, in the Ministry of Business of Guyana and by microfinance organizations. So when those women go to those institutes or entities with a business plan, they can receive a loan or a grant to establish their business. In addition to this, my office coordinates ICT workshops for adolescents and out of school youth, which includes modules on sexual and reproductive health, preparing for the world of work, microfinance, and we recently added robotics. We also collaborate with STEM Guyana, which is equipping our young people and particularly encouraging our girl children uh, to become involved and to get active in this, with this and uh, skilled in with the, the skills they need for in this age of technology. On the face of it, the priorities of s -Clan fall outside of the scope of non-communicable diseases, which is the focus of this forum. However, I wish to posit that a holistic approach to citizens' health and well-being assists in the creation and maintenance of a healthy, educated and a po productive population and will contribute to the attainment of the by our countries of the sustainable development goals, which include anticipated achievements in health, well-being, and empowerment of all sectors of our population, as well as equity in gender relationship. By reducing adolescent pregnancy and combining this with adolescent-friendly health centers, where young people can receive information and services relating to sexual and reproductive health, as well as training on how to care for themselves and their babies, we can anticipate that fewer girls will experience repeat pregnancies. Through the inclusion of health and family life education in our school's curricula, from the earliest stages, our young people will be educated about their bodies and the consequences of risky sexual behavior. More of our young girls can then complete their secondary education. They can become employed and earn decent wages. They will be better able to care for their children and themselves, having been made aware of the importance of nurturing their children. They and their children will, will then, one assumes, not become burdens to the state, nor will they be trapped in the cycle of poverty. Similarly, Having been informed about the importance of a healthy diet and lifestyle, they will be more active and less likely to consume foods loaded with saturated fats and preservatives, lowering the risk of contracting the NCDs that are so prevalent in our region, or to engage willingly in risky sexual behavior, which may lead, them, uh, lead to them con contracting diseases such as cervical <coughs> cancer, STIs, and HIV and they may also be encouraged to pursue tertiary education. 
Bear in mind that adolescents and young people comprise the largest cohort in our region and indeed the global population today. How they live their lives will greatly impact the development of the countries in which they live. ESCLAN also focuses on the reduction of domestic violence, which has become so prevalent in our society and which impacts the psychological and physical health of many persons. There is nothing new or innovative in pointing out that development is driven by girls and women, because women, when women advance, their families advance with them. The data indicate that investment in the health, rights, and well-being of girls and women leads to improvement in the lives of all society. This is because, and the data support this, girls and women spend 90% of their earned income on their families in comparison to the estimated 40% spent by males. Each additional year of secondary schooling equals a 15 to 25% increase in a girl's potential income. And with the provision of modern contraception, there would be a marked decrease, about 70%, it is estimated, in unintended pregnancies and unsafe abortions, and a concomitant increase in their education, participation in the labor force, and earning potential. In addition, women and girls are generally the primary caregivers in the home, caring for children and parents or other elderly relatives, so their impact spans generation. I would like to suggest too that encouraging our women and girls to desist from the use of alcohol and or tobacco can lead to delivery of healthy babies and of course a healthy population, which when added to their influence on their families and friends may contribute meaningfully to health and well-being of the entire population. In this regard, I would also like to um, draw attention to the fact that the age of consent for sexual activity is different from the age, the legal age of maturity. So there's a disconnect between the age of 16 for sexual activity and 18 for uh, maturity, the right to vote and so on. So when people, when young uh, people go and ask for uh, contraceptives, they are turned back because they need to have parental approval. And so we need to address this because as was stated before, our children are becoming sexually active at a much more, uh, an earlier age. So we need to think of how we can protect them and inform them as opposed to having them go into a clinic and be turned away because they are not old enough and they have not brought a parent um, who might not be anywhere on the horizon in some parts of our countries, you might say. And um, so therefore they are also put at greater risk because of um, what I would call out of date legislation. So logically therefore focus on the key elements of every Caribbean woman, every Caribbean child can facilitate the, achieve, the attainment of several SDGs such as goal three, good health and well-being of people, goal five, gender equality, goal eight, decent work and economic growth, goal 10, reduced inequalities, goal 12, responsible consumption and production, and goal 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions. And I would venture to add that SDGs pertaining to the reduction of poverty and hunger may be added to these. The spouses of CARICOM leaders are visible Citizens are usually interested in what we say and do. They usually collaborate with line ministers, professionals, and interest, interested members of the private sector, NGOs, and individuals at all levels to achieve the results they desire. They can also lend their voices and their energies to campaigns aimed at reducing NCDs in our respective communities. The challenge is to recognize how the goals of every Caribbean woman Every Caribbean Child Initiative dovetail with those relating to harness these resources. Thank you for your patience and your time.